causation versus correlation or association. We've spoken before about the fact that a really strong correlation or association between two variables doesn't necessarily imply that a change in one causes a change in the other. We can say that it explains a change in the other based on the relationship. So here we have the number of fresh lemons imported from the USA from, to the USA from Mexico over a period of five years, and what happened to the total US highway fatality rate over that time. And it's a beautiful, negative, strong association with an R squared of 0.97. So 97% of the variation in US highway fatality rate can be explained by the number of fresh lemons imported that year. Quite obviously, lemons are not causing a massive reduction in the highway fatality rate. Something else is going on. Now, some of the possible non-causal explanations for where we see a correlation. One example is common cause. It's also called common response. And so there's a strong positive, I hope you don't mind my um, shorting, shortened notation there, positive, little plus, association between sunscreen use and number of people fainting. Now, while I am allergic to sunscreen, most people aren't. So most people aren't putting on sunscreen and promptly fainting because the sunscreen caused them to faint. What's happening is one separate factor is causing both of those to rise. And if we're feeling very intelligent today, we can probably work out what it is. It's the temperature. When you've got a high temperature or a very sunny day, that tends to drive people wearing sunscreen, which is less likely on a cool or cloudy day, and a high temperature on a sunny day also tends to drive people fainting. So while what we see is sunscreen use goes up and fainting goes up, they're both driven by a common cause, or they're both having a response to another variable. So common cause is one really often, really frequent way that we see a non-causal explanation for an association. Confounding variables is another one. So for example, many people feel better on a gluten-free diet, myself included. So we could say that you know, lower gluten equals higher well-being, and we've got an association there. But when you start cutting gluten out of your diet, you're also cutting a whole bunch of things. It equals low carb. It often equals higher vegetables, uh, vegetable consumption. And so there's all these other things that are going on. We can't be sure that it's the low gluten that makes people feel better. It could be that it's lower carb. It could be they're eating more vegetables. It could be that they're actually just having, getting more exercise because they're doing a focus on their health at the moment. So when there's other variables that could be having an effect and it's, you really can't untangle them, that's when you start to say, okay, maybe we've got a confounding variable. Confound means to confuse. And it could just be coincidence, as in my lemons example. It's very unlikely that as our lemon imports increase, our roads become safer because of that. But it's quite likely that over time our roads become safer and our cars become safer and so the fatality rate drops. And also over time, 
we like eating more lemons and so the lemon imports increase and it just so happens that they both happened over time so coincidence is also when you can't see an obvious common cause or obvious confounding variables sometimes things just go up and down over time and you can pick any of them and put them together and it looks like you might have a correlation but it, there's no connection whatsoever.